Hi, welcome. Thanks for downloading my PowerPoint-ish presentation. It's more of a movie. Um, this is Change in nurse pr Nursing Practice and Education for GNRS 503 with me, Howie, and um, Professor Diana Rodriguez. So nursing education has made tremendous progress over a decade, but the United States still leads the world in dollars spent on health care. Approximately $30.1 trillion, which is 17% of the U.S. economy, were aggregated to 155 disease conditions. Yet despite these issues, there are still people with little to no access to modern health care enjoyed by most Americans. Some of these are due to racial disparities and economic gaps within America. Furthermore, since developed countries such as the U.S. still have areas where it is difficult to deliver health care, there are also entire countries that lack sufficient access to health care within the general population. Enter mHealth. mHealth is a term used to describe the use of mobile applications in order to deliver care to anyone with an access to a mobile phone. As of 2018, approximately 894 papers appear within the CINAHL database just on mHealth alone. It is a burgeoning movement that focuses on providing quality health care with little financial burden. But is it enough to change patient outcome and prevent endemics? Or is traditional health care within a concrete building the only way to provide quality health care? Nurses have always been consumers of health care information. They obtain it and disseminate it to patients. However, it is time that nurses adapt to become health information producers. Some medical schools have already begun to incorporate programming code as part of their study curriculum. Nursing schools, on the other hand, have attempted to incorporate technology into the curriculum as well, but with subjects such as nursing informatics. However, this subject aims to create an efficient and secure database of patient health information via the use of electronic health records. This makes nurses only more better consumers, but still does not make them producers of data. Over 1 billion people use cell phones, and 89% of those are smartphones, which are phones that have the capability to download and install apps. Apps are little pieces of software that contain programming that store data on users' phones or on the cloud. The cloud is this housing of servers that relay and store information instead of on smartphones. Some apps are meant to provide medical health interventions, including but not limited to patient education, patient monitoring, patient reminders via the use of SMS and text messaging, as well as algorithms that empower the patient to make medical decisions that best serve him or her. So the nascent mHealth movement has begun. As of this writing, so many more published articles on mHealth are being put into the database as we speak. Many of these aim to serve those in rural communities as well as in impoverished areas with little to no formal health care. So now we go into changes in teaching. Programming is no longer required for students in order to make an app. There are plenty of software development kits, also known as SDK, available for developers to make apps that are native to iPhone or Android phones. You don't only have to know any specific one like coding language. There are a lot of drag and drop software that will help you. They all provide feature rich capabilities that give apps their breadth of user interaction and storage management, but some are cumbersome to use and require a steep learning curve. What some researchers have done though is find a way to incorporate a learning environment where medical and nursing students can make mHealth apps without having to learn to code. This, this provides two things. One, it encourages nurses to become authors of health-related apps rather than by a person trained only in software programming. And this provides a more robust user experience, both for a nursing professional as well as their patients. And two, nurses in the field become empowered because they can utilize software that was made for them Essentially, we want nurses to be able to learn to code, but also to be like data scientists. The reason why nurses can't be replaced by apps is because nurses have a lot more data points to be able to observe. Just like physicians, nurses uh, directly contact the patient 
and they are attuned to not only the physical aspects of whatever patient health status is currently at, but they can also attune themselves to uh, the mental and emotional states that the patient have. And these are, at least not for now, unable to be um, uh, unable to be copied and adapted to by a computer. Only a human is the best person to be able to uh, navigate the changing and uh, never-ending status of a living organism and be able to take that information and do something with it. And now on to cultural implications. Although mHealth exhibits potential in serving the underserved, there are still many barriers to overcome. For example, as ubiquitous as smartphones are, not all rural areas possess them easily. Nor is it easy to charge phones as readily as they do in more developed countries. There is also a steep mistrust of mHealth users due to populations being burned in the past. Nevertheless, some healthcare workers are finding themselves empowered with mHealth apps as they utilize them to supplement their professionalism and healthcare knowledge to provide quality care. For example, in the study Mahila, some female workers in Bangladesh and Africa have been seen as quote-unquote unladylike in mannerisms due to their work in advocating for pregnancy health as well as their dealings with men in other villages. However, after some time, their status as a gender becomes secondary to their status as a competent caregiver that has access to modern medical sources of information. They were guided by registered nurses and they themselves became quite a strong source of information uh, for healthcare, helping to save many lives in their villages. Therefore, trust is an important barrier that must be overcome in order to create a working relationship with different cultures. So you might be thinking to yourself, millennials are familiar with mobile apps and are more naturally adapted to mHealth. However, Many modern nurses are also looking to find fulfillment in their careers rather than focusing solely on financial gain and social status. Creating an mHealth app and contributing to its distribution in areas and countries with lower resources than ours help to serve the underserved and it is a cost-effective and powerful resource that, if done correctly, satisfies many holistic aspects of nursing care as well as regularly um, qualified healthcare that is evidence-based and up-to-date. Therefore, a call to action is to create changes in the school curriculum that incorporates research and development that supplement nursing education by using these mHealth apps, not only to serve us, but to help others who are not as, uh, are not as, um, benefited as we are. So I ask you to take a chance and just like learning any other language, learning to program to code is going to be the same way as we are learning how to make PowerPoint presentations. So it incorporates research and development and supplements nursing education while benefiting those with little access to healthcare. A little side note, I've made a app and it's available on iTunes. All you have to do is look up my name and um, my apps will be there. Uh, I hope that uh, other people like nursing grad students, it was made for med surge but I'll be making some for different units as well um, all throughout my career. So it might be a little bit um, incomplete but I was very happy and lucky to be able to have it um, approved through the iTunes store. So check it out. And um, please feel free to keep in contact with me. Um, I will see you guys around. If not, you can just always check your smartphone. Thanks a lot. This is Howie signing off for GNRS 503 Cultural Competency. Bye-bye, and thank you again.